Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. More on them later. So about a month ago, I made my first attempt at a sub 250 gram RC nano wing inspired by designs like the Nano Goblin and the Flickwing, which are both super tiny but compatible with FPV, gyroscope based flight, and autopilot, all on a plane that weighs about 250 grams. And there's just something about seeing these extremely small high tech wings flying through trees and up in the mountains that really grabs my attention. So I decided I would try to do something like this on my own. Now I haven't actually dabbled in autonomous flight yet, but my plan in this video is to create a solid platform for testing as I haven't had much luck with flying wings in the past. Most of the electronics I used for these wings were just stripped off of old planes. So as you would imagine, the stuff I was using was not at all the right size for a nano wing. But I just decided to try to make it work by soldering the right connection pins. But in general, these oversized components add a lot of unnecessary weight, drag, and take up a lot of space, which ultimately weakens the lift generated by the wing. But probably the biggest issue was having a big motor and a big propeller. You'll see why this is an issue later. And here it is, all finished up. You can tell just how small this wing was. It had a wingspan of about 19 inches and weighed a little under 200 grams. So yeah, it's really tiny. But it's time to see if it can actually fly. And as expected, it couldn't fly at all. But I was surprised to see that it was showing some signs of controlled flight. Maybe if I moved the CG forward and lowered the elevon throw, it could have actually flew, but after that I just ended up making a new design. The wing design you see here had a much larger wingspan and a nose to get the CG further forward. I was pretty confident that this one would fly, and it was able to achieve flight, but it did so very poorly. Couldn't exactly figure out why, but it was super hard to control and it always wanted to do rolls and flips. So yeah, really weird. After that, I tried making a replica of the Nano Goblin, and it looked pretty cool, but it was clear I didn't learn my lesson that the motor I was using was just way too big for these planes. Every time I threw them, it would just spin out of control, and this was probably another factor into why the other designs failed. Too much torque in the motor. With knowing that, I went ahead and got the super tiny 1108 5000 kV motor. This motor might have actually been too small for my application, but I just wanted to see if I could get some better results. And instead of using regular foam board, I decided to hotwire some wings out of insulation foam to get a more accurate airfoil profile, and also to make the whole craft really light. After finishing, the weight came out to be about 155 grams. But even with these modifications, it still didn't seem to fly any better than my previous wings. Most of the time, it would fly just fine after I threw it, but right as I put my hands back onto the controls, it would just spiral down to the ground. I even tried lowering the throw of each elevon to 50% of the original setting, but it didn't seem to make any difference. It also just felt like it didn't have enough power to get up in the air, even though the motor is capable of producing 270 grams of thrust. After lots of trial and error, I put the nano wing project aside for about a month, and once I got the motor motivation to try again, I was able to have a successful design. But before that, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. If you like designing and prototyping, whether it's for projects or for your own needs, I highly recommend using PCBWay and their industrial level services. PCBWay specializes in high quality custom PCB fabrication and manufacturing. You can choose the number of layers, board thickness, solder mask color, surface finish, everything down to the tiniest detail. If you're not working with PCBs, PCBWay also offers CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. All industrial grade services made super accessible. It's super quick and easy to upload your files and adjust specifications to your needs. They've been helping me with an upcoming project, which I can't tell you too much about right now, but just look at that print quality. Super accurate and no warping. And the best part is that you can get your designs made from professional materials without needing a factory in your garage. And lucky for my viewers, if you use the link in my description, you'll get a free $5 welcome coupon to get started. Using this link will not only allow you to use their amazing services, but it will also help support the channel. Again, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now back to the wing project. For this next wing attempt, I mainly prioritized making a larger wing. So this time I had a wingspan of 25 inches. Still relatively small, but compared to my other designs, it was a lot bigger. After that, I cut some KF airfoil stubs for the wing. I prefer making the wings for planes these small KF airfoils because it reduces the weight and makes the airfoil a lot thinner. The electronics I used for this wing were a 20 amp ESC, 850 milliamp 3 cell, a 2204 2300 kV motor, and standard 9 gram servos. The electronics worked fine for this wing, but I'll explain at the end of this video why it still wasn't a good idea to go with these electronics. But at least this way, the wing is big enough to where the motor torque wasn't going to affect it too much. And this was the first finished iteration. So weirdly, the wing had some very bizarre flight characteristics. There were points where it was actually flying, but it felt extremely tail heavy, and some points where it would just constantly dive into the ground. I don't know if this was from the way I threw it, but I couldn't exactly figure out the cause. To hopefully get the wing to fly longer and get a chance to control it, I threw it from higher up, and this time it actually started flying. Not well by any means, it just kept swaying side to side since it was too tail heavy, but it's pretty hilarious seeing a wing fly like this. To fix the CG problem, I added a body pod so I could slide the battery further forward. And once I went to go test it, I didn't realize till much later that my battery was just super low, which is why I wasn't able to get up into the sky. 
so I ended up just chucking it from higher up, and finally it was sustaining controlled flight. It still didn't seem to fly that good, had a lot of weird roll oscillations, but after some tuning it was flying decently well. And while doing some more flying, my dad brought his Sony A7iii with a FB7200 lens. And here's some of that footage. After that, I did some more flight tests by myself, and this time with a new 850mm3 cell. And this greatly improved its performance, it was now able to fly from a wingtip launch much easier without feeling underpowered. Now, flying this wing is fun and all, but I think it'd be cooler to get some onboard footage. So for this, I decided I would use my Runcam 6 I got recently for 4K stabilized footage. This camera weighs about 50 grams, which isn't really ideal for this type of wing plane, but it's the smallest camera I had, so I just had to go with it. And instead of just putting the camera immediately on, I wanted to do some experimenting with the thrust line. So I took a 50 gram weight and put it in different positions to see which one would fly the best. And I guess my hunch was right that the thrust line was indeed too low. <laughs> okay, now we got the weight at the bottom. So hopefully this should offset the thrust angle thing. So now the CG's in line. At least if I think that's the problem. Oh yeah. Wow. That is way better. Maybe it's still pitching up a little bit. Maybe I have too much trim. But definitely flies. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that flies much better. Now, of course, it's not like I'm going to put the camera at the bottom of the wing, but it does let me know what I could fix for future designs. And now, if knowing this wing was capable of the extra 50 grams of weight on board, I put the camera on and did a short flight. And unfortunately, the footage looked pretty bad. I just think this wing was way too unstable to get proper smooth footage. I do end up fixing this problem later, but at the moment, I wanted to have some more fun with this wing, so I brought it out to a bigger area and did some casual fun flying. Ooh. At this point, I was pretty satisfied with how it was flying, but I wanted to see if I can improve the footage and also just make the flight performance more smooth of a flight stabilizer. For this, I'm using a simple Delta Wing Gyro. This doesn't have any software you can connect it to like Ardu Pilot, but I will most likely mess around with that later on. But this is just to see how much a gyro will improve its performance. It took me a while to realize this gyro only works with PPM inputs, and my receiver usually works with PWM inputs. But after fixing that, it was finally working. This gyro has three modes, manual, semi-gyro, and full gyro. That is incredibly smooth. You can now see just how much better the footage is. And wow, just look at that view. You can see why I really want to fly this wing up in the mountains. On this day of flying, we went to some other places, and unfortunately, it was extremely foggy, which is pretty rare for Colorado. But still, the wing flew just fine, and the footage was pretty cool. It'd still be much better if it was nice and sunny, but it was definitely a pretty fun atmosphere to fly in. So my camera died, so I wasn't able to record anything, but it is pretty insane how this place looks with the fog. Like it looks like a liminal space, it's so weird. I don't think I've ever been in fog this bad before. It doesn't look as crazy on the phone, but in real life, it definitely just looks like we're in a haunted sort of horror movie or whatever. <laughs> I did some more flights with the gyro and it worked great. So in general, I'd say this project was a pretty good success. It was super fun flying this wing around and watching the footage afterwards. But there's one thing and that's that the whole wing with the camera on board weighs about 320 grams, which is much heavier than I wanted. 
Yeah, 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 I know. It isn't even close to being under 250 grams. But honestly, that wasn't too surprising since when adding up the weight of all these electronics combined, it comes to a staggering 170 grams, which only leaves about 80 grams for the wing itself and other stuff. So yeah, not a good option to turn into an autonomous nano wing. But what I will most likely do is keep this design shape and layout and make it instead autonomous. And not worry too much about it being under 250 grams because I think it's smarter to primarily focus on the new electronic stuff instead of keeping it as small as possible. So yeah, stay in tune for more upcoming wing projects because there will definitely be more of these I'll be working on. But that's it for this video, so yeah, bye.